So today I am going to list eight things that nobody likes, that nearly everybody hates in Cold War. It's been a few weeks since I did my last commentary video talking about what my thoughts were on this game. And now it's time to get drastic after even more time has gone by, especially since I'm starting to see where the game is heading and where it's at now. So let's hop to it. So with Cold War, let's confront the elephant in the room. Let's just get it out of the way. Skill-based matchmaking and how it balances teams, it's a bit ridiculous. It seems like almost every lobby now, I find myself going up against the highest possible leveled players constantly. And nobody likes skill-based matchmaking. Call of Duty was built on the exact opposite of that. And I'm just throwing this one out there. I can't stand it when I grind on a game and the new season or whatever starts. And what do you know? I lose the level or prestige that I'm on all because a new season started. The matchmaking is totally broken. How can I be a level 1 on any prestige or a level 30, 40, or 60 and get thrown into a game versus nothing but level 100 tryhard no life virgins? It's completely beyond me. And let's not forget about the objective. Being a team player on Cold War, it doesn't give you enough points for playing or capping the objective. There's another screenshot I'm going to show that sums it up perfectly right here. You can see I have the second highest score in a kill confirm match. Because, you know, I, I love me some kill confirmed. It's my favorite game mode. I can't get enough of that shit. So, I'm playing kill confirmed. I get 32 eliminations. Which is the highest in the lobby. I get 42. A whopping 42 tags. That's unheard of. I can't stress that enough. Almost nobody can get 42 tags and kill confirmed. And 31 of those were confirms. 11 were denies. And then you look at the guy directly above me. He has nearly twice as much score as me. Meanwhile, what the fuck did he do? He went and grabbed only 13 tags total and had 29 eliminations. So, I beat him in killing by a few eliminations. And then I beat him overwhelmingly when it comes to playing the objective by over three times as many tags. And he still nearly doubles my score. Does that seem fair to you? Playing the objective does not pay off at all on this game. It's a scoring system that's completely broken as well. I had a buddy of mine ask me a couple weeks ago if I wanted to play some hard point with him. And I just couldn't help but bust out laughing because that game mode is an even bigger joke because it does not reward anybody that plays the objective at all. So, he convinces me to play one round, one game of hard point, and I agreed to this just to prove my point to him. And what do you know, two minutes later, all I hear is, Oh, I don't understand why there's so many fake MLG tryhards in the lobby, and I'm not scoring any points either. <laughs> oh man, I, I, I had to mute my mic so fast, I almost lost it. I, I, I was almost in tears at that point after I heard that one. Moving forward to the attachment system, I have yet to meet a single player that honestly feels that this was a good idea to bring back the attachment system from Corner Camp Warfare from last year. I'm not going to talk anymore about this one because I already have in a previous video, but it's just common sense, people. Nobody wants to lose 25% or 15% of their aim down sight time for another attachment. So on to the next topic. When it comes to the score streaks, I think the higher ones were decent, but like for example the cruise missile, unfortunately Treyarch decided to nerf that by making it only obtainable by either the care package or for a whopping 3500 points now instead of the 2600 it started at, which makes it nearly useless when you are getting a whopping 50 points per kill or assist in most game modes. On top of that, I never thought armor would suck so bad on a Call of Duty game. I honestly think the Ballistic Vest from MW3 was better. And if there's any OG Call of Duty players that are watching this video that played MW3, you better just nod your head and say this motherfucker knows what the fuck he's talking about because it's just horrible. The armor is absolutely terrible on this game. The sentry gun takes one nade and it's done. 
the gunship and the chopper gunner, you are lucky if you get five or six kills before everybody puts on cold-blooded or spawns inside of a building to where you can't find them anymore simply because that's how the maps were designed on this game. So, bottom line, most of the streaks suck. We're going to the next topic. As far as pay to win, the season pass or battle pass or whatever is a joke like it always is. Giving players the option to buy into that to give themselves a better gun or better variant of a gun that's much more powerful, I mean, that's just completely fair. I mean, how dare anybody not shell out even more money to a bunch of greedy bastards to give them even more of a reason to continue to fuck up this once great franchise. I mean, seriously, how can you expect people to be okay with this? You're going to make a variant of the AK-74U, for example, that has 30% more power, and that's better all the way around compared to the standard version, and nobody except for the Season Pass players or Battle Pass players can obtain that or unless they open up their wallet and shell out even more money for COD points. There's no other way to earn it except for paying for it with real money. It's just an absolute joke. Going forward to the aim down sight time, look, if you have played the game, you know it's terrible on most weapons. And if you have not played the game yet, let me break it down for you. Imagine trying to win a drag race against a Ferrari with a million dollars on the line when you were driving in a fucking Honda Civic, okay? That's your aim down sight time, the Honda Civic. Deep down, you know even the bitches with the fucking Camaros will be honking their horns as they're driving by, as they get on their way to Wally World, all right? You ain't got a chance in hell. You are not going to beat the snipers, the guy with the shotgun, or the campers who are already waiting for you. It's just not going to happen most of the time. Now, when it comes to the footsteps and the spy plane and the perks, it basically forces your hand. Everybody has the same two perks on Ninja and Ghost because the footsteps are just as loud as the previous game. In the spy plane, it seems like 50% of the player base still uses that. So it makes it nearly impossible to not use both of those perks on most of your classes. So everybody uses the same shit 24 seven. We all want to use other perks, especially the other perks in the yellow category, but it's so hard to take away one of the two that I mentioned. And that really sucks because all five of the yellow perks do the most or offer the most. If I had to rank the top eight perks on this game, all five of the yellow perks in the third category are in the top eight on the entire game. They all do the most. And I would love to see things mixed up among other players. I would love to use the others available, but because of the overwhelming things I mentioned, most people aren't going to do that. The game forces you to have the same stuff as other players. Otherwise, you are going to be the one playing with the disadvantage as the match goes along. Who the hell is going to run around with dinosaur footsteps the whole game? Not me, not you, nobody. And the last thing that I have to mention on this list is the maps. They are completely copying what... Corner Camp Warfare did from last year. Almost everything is the same. And that includes what they are doing with the maps. Two days ago from the time of making this video, they started to add more garbage old maps that were already on previous games. And it isn't going to stop here, I'm calling it now. They are selling you roughly a small piece of the same game that they already sold you from the past pretty much. Nuketown and Raid. Raid was just added with that Season 1 update. I'll be honest. I've never been that person to ride the popular wave. I don't care if people disagree with me or not. I'm not going to sit here and say that Nuketown and Raid are good maps. Those are two of the most overrated maps ever. I never liked or cared for either map. This is now the fifth time Nuketown has made it to a Call of Duty game, I believe. In Raid, I think this is the third time, but I could be wrong on that. Either way, I'm over it, man. I don't want the same trash maps that we've had for over, what, eight years? And we keep on getting it over and over again for years on end? I'm just over it. So, I think I'm already done with this game. It just got so boring so fast, and along with the crap I just mentioned, I just have better things to do. Last year, I quit playing the multiplayer for that Call of Duty game like three months in, and I was done. This year... 
it's been about 35 days. So, in other words, we're breaking records over here. At this point in my life, if a game is not enjoyable for me to play, I am not playing it. My time is more important. It was worth a try, but it's not for me. I gave it a chance, but I'm not going to sit here and play the same thing or the same maps over and over again that we've already had for the past 10 years or so. And you know they are just going to keep on adding more maps and I, I've already said it. And I can tell other people are getting sick of it because the guys that I play with, I couldn't even get them on the game over the past week or so. They just completely blew me off and I can't really blame them because the game sucks now. So I'm going to hope Insurgency or Crossfire X finally comes out soon. I might even be reduced to going back to GTA for the time being if that tells you anything. But hey, thanks for making it this far in the video if you did. That just about does it for the commentary. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Peace. Hostile spy plane established overhead. 